Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Welcome everyone to Corporate Law Fight Club. And if there is a jobber of corporate law fight club it is most definitely mark bazeal and yeah i realize in my last litigation prime time video i got my punches in on mark bazeal but much like jello there's always room for dunking on mark bazeal there's always room for jello <laughs> joey how do you make that dirty but enough about the sexual implications of jello I'm here to talk about a lawsuit that I had briefly touched on in a live stream previously and was on Fud Daddy's Twitter space call going over, and that is Mullen versus GEM, Global Emerging Markets Fund. Now, Mark isn't known for his straight-up legal arguments. He's more known for his tippy-toe, dance-around-the-facts bullshit legal arguments. And in this case, he had me fooled for a brief moment. See, I'm not as well-versed on the Mullen issues and haven't been following it as in-depth as some of these other companies, like, say, AMC. So I had heard about the arbitration between GEM and Mullen, but hadn't really been thinking too clearly on it. So when GEM came in and called Mark out on his bullshit, I had a good laugh at that. When Mark's reply was finally released with all the redactions that were wanted by the parties, I started to look more closely at this lawsuit, though. And at first, it seemed very much like maybe Mark Bazile had found a workable argument. I said as much in my live stream, and I said as much on Fud Daddy's Spaces call. But... The more I looked at it, and the more I looked at the case law that he was citing, the more it became clear that, once again, this was just another one of Mark's little games. The main crux of Mark's legal argument is citing AOI Nisei Dawa Insurance Company v. ProSite Specialty Management, where it quotes Sedan Associates Incorporated, saying, It is well-settled law that even where separate agreements are meant to be construed together, the primary objective in contract interpretation is to give effect to the intent of the parties as revealed by the language they choose to use. It's a funny argument to make for a guy that's about to proceed to cherry-pick through this document for little niggly weasel words that he can use to then make an extraneous argument. He then points out that the warrant agreement says that state and federal courts exclusively located in New York are venue and suggests that because it states that venue is to be in New York, that this is dispositive of it being an arbitration clause when really it isn't dispositive you have to select a state law that is applicable in any case regardless of arbitration or not so the statement is not dispositive of any sort of arbitration clause that may exist it is simply stating what laws are applicable when determining who is right or wrong whether it goes to trial or whether it is arbitration he then states because section 9 Point O two b doesn't specifically use the term transaction documents that the other documents are not subject to this clause even though all the surrounding language suggests that this is one complete document he even cites it section 9.2 a and section 9.03 both use the term transaction documents showing that all these documents are one agreement and that the language of the document throughout bears out the claim that these are all separate documents for each separate part of the transaction, but the transaction is one whole agreement. Jim's lawyers also point this out, or, well, what we can see of it that isn't redacted, that Mullen already made this same argument that Mark Bazeal is now making during the arbitration process, saying that, according to the contract, the warrant isn't applicable to arbitration. And that claim, even after giving them the attempt to fully brief it, was rejected. Even the underlying claims of Mark's case were discussed in arbitration and were rejected. So even if Mark wants to play this game of, 
Ah, uh, yes, of contracts. Full context comes from the document as a whole. But please look at this one or two sentences in these paragraphs here for the entire context of how the document operates. Mullen has already made those same arguments, and they were found to have no weight in the arbitration that it submitted itself to. And while Jim's lawyers don't outright state that they'll be seeking sanctions for Mark's lack of candor before the court about the current goings-on in the arbitration, I find it interesting that they cite Google v. Starovokov and pointing out that sanctions were imposed for violation of the duty of candor to a court. One can only hope and dream that Mark Bazile will get sanctioned because maybe then he will stop his frivolous ambulance chasing ways or be compelled to do so by a court. And his lemmings on Twitter and elsewhere will have to admit that Mark just might not be that great of a lawyer. Anyway, till next time, I'll catch you folks around.